Good afternoon and welcome to News Blitz on ZTN. Let's take a look at our top stories. Zimbabwe police demand drones and helicopters. Typhoid vaccination launched in Zimbabwe. We give you an update in Mozambique as Sadak leaders are set to meet before month end. And in sport, Zim football is back as local action kicks off. Zimbabwe Police Commissioner General Godwin Matanga has told Parliament that the country's law enforcement is hamstrung by a lack of resources. He says this is the reason why they are struggling to deal with the smuggling of minerals. Now, Commissioner General Matanga says officers now need drones and helicopters to rein in sophisticated criminals. Co chairpersons, the best thing to have so that we can effectively patrol our border, we need a border road. Meaning, if I want to patrol our border today, take for example between Zimbabwe and Botswana, I will have to ask for authority from my colleague to use their road on the Botswana side, which is not advisable. At present, we are happy. We are using a helicopter from the ZDF. Unfortunately, we cannot fly it all the time because we don't have enough fuel for use by this helicopter. So again, we need helicopters. I think something like three helicopters will do. Unfortunately, some of us think that helicopters are very expensive. Some of the helicopters being used by other police forces throughout the world. They are even cheaper than the 4x4s we are driving on Harare roads. A 37-year-old Zimbabwean man believed to be part of a cigarette smuggling racket has been arrested in Musina with a contraband worth 1.6 million rands. The man was also found in possession of a stolen vehicle which he was using to transport his loot. South Africa's organized crime unit, uh, the Hawks spokesperson, Captain Matimba Maluleka, said the man was arrested at his warehouse in Musina on Monday where he was loading six cars with the cigarettes. Arrested a suspected international illicit cigarettes dealer in Musina on Thursday. Our police team, comprising different SAPS components, received intelligence about the vehicles that were loading illicit cigarettes at a warehouse in Musina and it was followed up. When the team arrived at the suspected illicit cigarettes warehouse, a trailer fully loaded with illicit cigarettes was found. Further investigations led to the discovery of other cigarettes that were hidden in six different vehicles. It was further established that one of the vehicles was reported stolen in Florida area in Gauteng province. The value of the recovered illicit cigarettes is um, 1.6 million rent, six vehicles and a trailer to the value of 1.1 million rent were seized. The suspect was charged for possession of illicit cigarettes and suspected stolen vehicle. The search for other outstanding suspects is continuing. Still on our crime watch, a suspected a suspect driving a truck with a smuggled second-hand clothes abandoned his 30-ton vehicle and took to his heels after being cornered by police in Zimbabwe's Manikalin province. A team of police officers ambushed the driver at the Makuti turnoff along the Mutare Bema Valley Road. When the suspect, who is still at large, was signaled to to stop at a security checkpoint, he allegedly failed to comply, resulting in police deflating truck tires after a high-speed chase. The suspect allegedly disembarked from the truck and fled the scene. Second-hand clothes with an estimated four million Zimbabwe dollars worth are suspected to have been smuggled from Mozambique through the Forbes border post. Manukulin Provincial Police Spokesperson Inspector Lakson Chananda confirmed the incident to ZTN. A team of police officers led by Chief Inspector Piri of support unit laid in ambush at the Makuti turnoff along the Mutare Bema Valley Road. The lorry approached at around midnight and when signaled to stop, the driver did not comply. Police pursued it and deflated tires by firing shots at the wheels. The lorry was found abandoned a short distance from the ambush uh, position. 154 bills of second hand clothes and 67 bills of shoes were found. The bills were handed over to Zimra for seizure and are valued at 4,250,000.
894. The accused persons are still at large. Let's move to health. Zimbabweans have been urged to get vaccinated in the face of a COVID-19 third wave that is already ravaging other countries. Minister of Health and Child Care Dr. Constantino Chiwenga say the COVID-19 pandemic was far from over, hence the call for vaccination. The call comes as the country this week reported its first case of the Indian variant. We continue to urge our people to get vaccinated against COVID-19 at their earliest opportunity, especially as we see and hear reports of a third wave of the deadly pandemic in other countries. Even as we report fewer and fewer cases, we advise our people to continue practicing all recommended prevention behaviors as the COVID-19 pandemic is far from over. Zimbabwe has introduced the typhoid vaccine in its routine childhood immunization program. Typhoid fever is a foodborne disease contracted by ingestion of contaminated food and water. Launching the program this morning, Minister of Health and Child Care Dr. Constantino Chiwenga said this is set to reduce infant mortality. There have been sporadic typhoid outbreaks throughout Zimbabwe over the past several years. Zimbabwe becomes the second country in Africa to introduce the typhoid vaccine after Liberia. The vaccination campaign, which starts on 24 May, just the next week on Monday, up to 4 June, will provide catch-up typhoid conjugate vaccine vaccination for over 6 million children aged 9 months to below 15 years in line with recommendations from the global and local immunization experts. Thereafter, all children in Zimbabwe will begin to receive typhoid conjugate vaccine through routine immunization at nine months of age. National and Central will also embark on an integrated vaccination program for three vaccines, which are the human papilloma virus, inactivated polio vaccine and typhoid, starting next Monday. Health Promotion Officer Takura Mzorodzi speaks. Fortunately, uh, Zimbabwe was part of other countries which were affected because there was a global shortage of IP virus. So... Now that we have the vaccine, we are targeting that age group or that range code that we missed back in 2016. So these are children who were born on the 23rd of January, year 2016, to 24th December, 2018. Now, meditation is increasingly being touted as one of the methods which help individuals cope with some symptoms associated with mental disorders. Recent studies suggest that meditation can help deal with depression and anxiety, as well as improve some cognitive and behavioral functions. A volunteer-based humanitarian organization, The Art of Living Zimbabwe, has embarked on a campaign to encourage people to take up regular meditation. Our correspondent Milton Sasa spoke to Diolin Kamunu, a volunteer at the foundation who posits that uh, mental illness could be the next pandemic to hit the globe after COVID-19. The Art of Living Foundation is hosting, has hosted for the past eight years um, a campaign called I Meditate Africa, which is there to promote inner peace by using techniques of meditation, mindfulness and quiet time. For the last uh, couple of years, meditation has become increasingly popular because it has been scientifically proven to um, reduce stress, to help people manage stress, and to also reduce an anxiety and depression. And I've also read that the next pandemic, after the COVID pandemic, is um, mental health, is one of the most important uh, things that the world needs to tackle now. 
Later today, the foundation will host a virtual mental health campaign dubbed Immediate Africa 2021. The campaign runs under the theme A Strong Mind, Building a Resilient Africa in celebration of Africa Day. Popular Star FM radio personality V Candy will be joined by several other prominent personalities, amongst them Miss Red and Titan, on a virtual mental health roundtable. V Candy speaks on the event. It will be myself uh, as the host, uh, V Candy, and I'll be joined by other personalities. We have Titan, who has been open about mental health. I also have Miss Reed, who has a book, uh, which also touches on mental health. And uh, we have Rosala Mila, um, our great artist from way back, who is still relevant, I think. So um, mainly, um, the point of discussion will be uh, around mental health, wellness, mindfulness, and um, you know how to just take control of your mind and find inner peace and find inner joy and not let you know what's happening outside affect you because peace begins from within it's an inside job Zimbabwe's procurement agent for pharmaceutical products, the national pharmaceutical company Natfarm, has partnered a local university to revive its production units for pharmaceutical products. This comes at a time when Cabinet has approved the pharmaceutical manufacturing strategy, which seeks to boost local production of essential pharmaceutical products. Natfarm Acting Managing Director Ivan Lumba told ZTN that the partnership will see the local university providing technology and production formulae. Dumba said production is expected to start in July this year with the aim to supply public health institutions before expanding to the private sector. We are working currently with one of the state universities to set up a production unit at um, Natfa Marari. We have moved quite uh, some distance in that regard and um, we are happy to say that uh, the relationship that we have with that state university is really um, centered around um, the 5.0 concept that uh, state universities would support um, local industrialization by supporting um, with the research, by supporting with the requisite technology. Still in business, as a result of the lockdown caused by the COVID-19 pandemic for the bigger part of 2020, Zimbabwean industries took the chance to increase production. A market survey by the Confederation of Zimbabwean Industries shows that production rose by 1% from December 2020 into the first quarter of 2021. But as productivity increases, there is need to secure markets. The country's trade development and promotion organization, ZimTrade, was recently in the Democratic Republic. Republic of Congo securing markets. Their Chief Executive Officer Alan Majuru speaks. We are going to work together with FEC, ZimTrade and FEC. We are going to put in place a business forum. On va that, en place un, un forum de business. that is going to follow up on all the opportunities that are going to come here. Ça, ça va suivre, ça va à suivre les, toutes les opportunities qu'on aura ici. Because trade between DRC and Zimbabwe is a little bit long. Parce que le, 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 la relation entre Congo et Zimbabwe c'est trop long. But Elle that alone presents opportunities for us to go trade between the two countries. Et ça présente One of the companies here is going to set up a, a, a packaging factory for sugar to distribute into Congo. Yeah. And another one is willing to come to set up shops so that they distribute and manufacture a lot of Zimbabwean goods and services. So that's why we are here. We have seen that for us to make meaningful progress in DRC. We have to have market presence. So all of them want to set up shop here in Lumumbashi and Kinshasa. We shift focus to the stock's incremental export incentives announced by government will encourage listing of exporters on the Victoria Falls Stock Exchange. This is according to the boss's chief executive officer, Justin Borni. Last week, Finance and Economic Development Minister Tuling Lube revealed through a press statement that incentives are expected to encourage listing and participation of firms on the VFX. Our business correspondent, Andy Hodges, is with the Stock Exchange's chief executive, Justin uh, Borny. Uh, good afternoon, Andy. 
Thank you, Blessing. Justin Mungoni, Chief Executive Officer of Zimbabwe Stock Exchange. Welcome to ZTN News Blitz. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Zimbabwe's main history, if I can call it that. We now have two stock exchanges. We have the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange and, of course, the Vic4 Stock Exchange. So my question is, how important is the Vic4 Stock Exchange, not just to the financial services industry, but okay. also to Zimbabwe's economy? So one of the challenges that we have uh, in Zimbabwe and as well as on the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange is to attract uh, foreign direct investment. And the big thing for direct investment is in the uh, investors complain about getting their money out. The situation has improved quite a bit, but one of the things that they complain about. And the second thing is the currency risk. So what the Victoria Force Exchange does is because it's denominated in hard currency, that all that risk goes away. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, so the okay. point is this, Victoria Falls Stock Exchange is there for all of us to invest in and also to raise capital in. Make sure you make it one of your stops. Back to you in the studio, blessing. Interesting bittersweet news today. Yesterday was World Bee Day and apart from just honey, there is a lot to love about bees. They're crucial to growing many of our favorite healthiest foods as they move pollen from one plant to the next and pollinating more than 100 fruits and vegetables including strawberries, potatoes and apples. In honor of World Bee Day, here we are. Uh, here are a few interesting facts that you might not know about nature's hardest working pollinators. Bees like to waggle dance, bees can communicate and make decisions by dancing, and bees can use tools to ward off attacks. Bees have also been observed to collect fresh animal feces and smearing them around the entrance of their hive. Into regional news as SADAC regional leaders will meet Mozambique's President Felipe Nusi before the end of May to tackle Islamist insurgency in that country. Military experts of the Southern African Development Community last month drafted a plan for a SADAC force of nearly 3,000 troops to dislodge the insurgency. The presidents of SADAC's security organ Troika, comprising Botswana, South Africa and Zimbabwe, were scheduled to meet President Nusi at a summit in Maputo on the 29th of April before the summit it was eventually postponed. A ceasefire between Israel and Hamas has come into effect. The ceasefire began early today, bringing to an end 11 days of conflict in which more than 240 people have died. Fighting began on the 10th of May after weeks of rising uh, between Israel and the Palestinian tension. Local sports news makes a comeback. That's coming up next in sports. We'll start with football. The long wait is over. Football in Zimbabwe is finally back. After a COVID-19 impacted year, local players and fans can now enjoy some football action. It starts, of course, with the Chibuku Super Cup tomorrow and uh, lined up fixtures in Harare. Caps United take on Yada at the National Sports Stadium. And you can watch that match live on ZTN. Tomorrow's other fixtures will see Blauio City taking on Chicken Inn at Baba Fields. And prisons and correctional services sides are also in action. Wawa battle it out against FC Platinum at Mandava, while at Sakuva it's going to be Tanix versus Army side Black Rhinos. Still with football, Premier Soccer League debutants, Cranbourne Bullets got a kit sponsorship boost ahead of the Chibuku Super Cup. The Army team could be donning new kit when they take on Manika Diamonds in the Chibuku Super Cup at Sakuva Stadium on Sunday. Speaking on the sidelines of the handover ceremony by a local firm in Harare yesterday, Zimbabwe National Army Brigadier General Training Efias Mahachi said he expects top performances from all Army teams. Our teams represent a national organization and um, they have the facilities to train. So they have no reason not to become the best teams. They are full-time professionals. They come 
from their homes to come and practice. So we try to support them in everything to make sure that they have all what they need to become good teams or the best teams. Cranbourne Bullets partners FMC are dreaming big. We have been supporting them for quite some time now, ever since they were still in Division 2. And uh, now, and they were then promoted to Division 1 and now they are in the Premier League. Uh, the donation that we have done today is worth 4,000 US dollars. And this relationship is going to be continuing for the coming years. On to cricket, Zimbabwe cricket all-rounder Sakanda Raza has begun rehabilitation after undergoing surgery on his arm early this month. It's two weeks since Raza went under the knife for an infection on his right arm. Today, the 34-year-old tweeted that he has started rehab and his body is responding well to medication. That does it for News Blitz uh, this afternoon. The story of the weekend, local action for football is back. And uh, don't miss that. It's coming up live on uh, ZTN and also PSL pages. Uh, do connect with us on our Twitter page. That's at ZTN News on Instagram at ZTN. And do visit our website, ztn.co.zw, to get in touch with more of our programming. Good afternoon and have a lovely weekend.